okay welcome to critical thinking and introduction so this is a class on how to think so critical thinking involves many skills one is reasoning one is evaluating the information that you have one is problem solving decision making and analyzing and it's a lot more that you need to apply and there's no one recipe that you can use to for critical thinking you have to apply your mind so let's see so first of all for thinking you need a language and we use language to communicate the language is ambiguous so what do we mean by that so let's look at an example Amit said bye to Raja as he got into a bus who got into a bus Amit or Raja so it's understood from the context who he is refers to so but it can be ambiguous so language is ambiguous and it, but we, we, we try to make language as precise as possible to avoid ambiguity and then we'll see so that first uh, first thing we need to make sure is the words we use it should be precise we cannot use vague words it should be exactly what you want to say and what does it mean to say language is precise basically you want to make sure that what you're saying is what the reader says is the listener understands the meaning of the sentence as intended by the speaker or the author it's not what everything has multiple interpretations we'll look at that later on but you should try to convey as much as possible and what is imprecise there are many problems with language words are not understood by the listener if you use big words uh, you'll confuse the listener they may actually fill in from the way you speak but they don't really know what it means and then use wrong words they sound like the word you want to intend to say but there's something else they will confuse the listener and wrong spelling that's a strict no no that means you probably don't have a command or language and wrong grammar grammar is, has to be correct and grammar is very hard to define but it's easy to spot wrong grammar and then of course there's ambiguous grammar there are many ways how many pauses here where you put a comma can cause ambiguity in the language so can you think of all these examples of each of them well think about them we'll just continue so the same sentence can mean different things to different people so this is example from facebook so this guy is saying what is your opinion about food shortage in the rest of the world one guy says what does food mean what does shortage mean what does the rest of the world mean what does opinion mean so yeah so take a sentence different people have different aspects of the world that they're interested in and there's no universal guidance for what is right and wrong and what it means and what is the context of the sentence so let's see and language is and logic is deeply tied to philosophy and who is the biggest name in philosophy of language Ludwig Wittgenstein this guy and his book philosophy investigations and he said in his quote he says if a lion could talk we would not understand him in philosophical investigations 1953 page 223 he says that so what does that mean so language first of all lions do not speak our language and we just guess what they're trying to say when they growl or roar but even if they spoke english we would not understand it because the context is so different it's like you meet a different person from a different tribe and then they have these rituals and you'll never understand that unless you share a common heritage or common background that's what this means it's not enough to speak the same english if you meet met somebody from the moon and they spoke english you'd probably say talk the same language but still you'll not understand each other and the second problem is people hear what they want to not what you want them to hear so there's an example from again from a cartoon you never listen to me only hear what you want to hear and the guy says sure i will have a beer so when you're talking or giving a speech is enough not enough to think that you're right you must also keep in mind what your listeners understanding from what you say and this is very common problem people have different points of view sometimes you can't even argue with people because they don't understand or they don't they have already have a preconceived notion of what is right and wrong so let's look at a different points of view so reality is so complex that 
the same event can appear dif di differently to different people from different points of view. For example, in this cartoon, we see uh, there are four sticks on this side, on the left side, and there are three sticks on the right side. Of course, this is a optical illusion, but the idea is clear. And we look at another example, how people see things differently. The same picture, this original photo, and different newspapers can report the same event by which part of the photo you crop. So and, uh, against war picture will crop of the the humanitarian aspect on the left side, and on the right side, in the support of the war, you see the soldier doing a good deed. On the right side, you, left side, you see the soldier doing a bad deed, and the original photo is like that. So you can distort views by the way you interpret or show talk about it. So let's look at Calvin and Hobbes. So Calvin is this is Calvin. It's a famous cartoon by Bill Watterson. He says you call it news. This is informative. This is soundbite. This is entertainment. This is sensationalism. So one thing to remember the news is paid for and whoever pays for decides what they want to say. They will not show something that disagrees with them. So when you read news you probably go to Google News and read multiple sources from multiple viewpoints and then you decide okay does it make sense? Is it correct? Is it right? And sometimes you don't know. In that case you have to suspend your judgment. Then we all know, we all know or should know that we have biases. It's like we see the world the way we are, not the way the world is. Is it a fact or an opinion? So there's a, we have a cartoon of a rhinoceros. He's drawing a landscape in Africa. And his paintings, all of them have a hill in the front. But that hill is not really in the landscape, but it's on his horn. So that's his bias. And, and he has colored glasses, you would say. And you see the world through colored glasses, the, the glasses that you wear. So there's this guy, Bertrand Russell, the philo philosopher. What he says? He says, a stupid man's report of what a clever man says can never be accurate because he unconsciously translates what he hears into something he can understand. And that's a very common problem. So don't believe everything you hear, read or see on TV, newspaper, rumors, magazines, books, lectures. You must think at all times. There are no recipes for right or wrong. So let's look at the other as more aspects of it. Language is culturally sensitive. What means one in one in one culture means the opposite in something other than language. So in this case, there's a cartoon uh, jury of English majors. The jury is out here, and they're listening. And the guy in the dock is saying, "I didn't do nothing." And if you, what's the problem with this? Didn't is a not negation, and nothing is a negation. If you negate two, it means yes, he did something. So logically, he's a, he's confessing to the crime. But in African American lingo, double negation is the same as single negation. But in logic, double negation means a positive event. And let's look at the next aspect of language. Your grammar shows your background. Okay, so this is the thing from Google suggests. If you type how can you, you as in character you, says how can you get herpes, how can you get HIV, how can you get AIDS, how can you get some VD disease, how can you get a broken heart, how can you mend a broken heart and then if you use good words like how can an individual, how can an individual impact the course of history, how can an individual make a difference. So and these are different sentences typed into Google and Google collects them all together and shows you from what other people type with anonymity so you won't see names, proper nouns but you get an idea what people are typing with your kind of spelling. So. People can just by watching your grammar, they can tell what kind of background you come from by comparing with similar people with similar language. Yeah, so you got to have a good language to be in the right. And your language is reflection of your friends or the company you keep. So punctuation matters also. And punctuation is basically a comma or pause in a comma. An uh, English teacher once wrote these words on the whiteboard. Women without a man is nothing. Then ask the students to punctuate the words. So the boys wrote, Woman without her man is nothing. The girls wrote, Woman without her man is nothing. So just by putting a comma, you can change uh, the negate the meaning of a sentence. Okay, so and then we look at more issues that we're going to cover in the course. So what is cognitive dissonance? So this is a cartoon out here. 
is a father telling his kid, How many times have I told you not to steal pencils from school? Don't I get you enough from office? So basically he's stealing from office and telling his child not to steal from school. The problem is his words don't match his action. So and people usually pay attention to your actions, not what you say. So cognitive dissonance is a dis discomfort experience when simultaneously holding two or more conflicting cognitions, ideas or beliefs. It's like you believe in God, you don't believe in God. And then you are in a cognitive dissonance, you are not really sure which is right. And it's hard to be in cognitive it's easier to just be one way or the other. Or is it still harder to say I don't know? Why is it hard? Okay. So one is lack of respect for reason. One is intellectual arrogance. Unwillingness to listen. One is intellectual laziness. And then lack of respect for evidence. This will also sabotage your ability to think critically. And ego is the biggest thing that gets in your way of thinking critically. You already have opinion. It will, it will impact your ego saying that, hey, like, you are wrong. And a lot of people can't take that. They'd rather be wrong than be wrong forever. Then accept that they are wrong and correct their opinion. So finally, if you have any questions, send them in the in the comments below this is the end of the presentation thank you